Hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm, try I'm trying to have my interstellar moment this time. <laughs> so t today we're going to talk about the, the, some issues I found with the response time of the system uh, due to the impact of DVFS and HMP. I think we are all aware that like, if you are using DVFS or you have a big little kind of system at HMP, then the time stretches. So if you're running at lower frequency, then the same amount of work will take longer to run. And compared to higher ones, so for instance, if you run for one millisecond and one gigahertz, you would be running for two millisecond and a half gigahertz. And the same thing if you are running at two different CPUs. Uh, but so real quick, just, I always forget, what does DVFS Dynamic voltage and frequency scaling. Wait, yeah. Dynamic voltage and frequency okay. scaling, yeah. I, I knew it was about that, but I yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just basically running, like, changing your frequency dynamically. Uh, so, like, when looking, so that started when I was looking at the, like, DVFS headroom and migration margins to try to remove the magic numbers we have. So I tried to run a test where I really start a, utili a task from utilization zero and utilist being zero as well, and just see, like, going to the max to test my patch and see how it's going. Then I found like interesting effects. So like over here where you see like how long it's, this is by the way, this is run on an M1 machine. So it's a big little, uh, the, the capacity of the, the little core is around 450-ish. Uh, so like it spends 90 millisecond on the little core before it actually moves down to the big core, which is quite a huge amount of time for something that's almost always running. And that's a common complaint I see from people like, hey, my task is stuck on a little core. It's like, why? Uh, it's like, it should, we don't expect it to, to stay that long, especially like a lot of the systems now run with 120 and like 60 like hertz, which means like your deadline 16 and 8 milliseconds. So you're missing a lot of frames before we realize like, yeah, I'm not really getting the performance I want. And if you look at the frequency, actually it gets worse. So like out of that 90 milliseconds, we spent like, I can't read it from here, 37 milliseconds at the lowest frequency. So like it took that long for the system to realize like we need to go to the next point. And like as you can see, it does get slightly better, but not enough. So like by the time, like after how many, like we spent like a lot of the time at the low frequency before we go to max. But people expect like, hey, I'm really always running. Why the hell am I still not running at the max frequency that quickly? Things get bigger once you go to the big core. But the, the actual problem comes from when you look at the utilization signal uh, around here. So this is with one millisecond tech, by the way. So if you have four millisecond tech, things get worse because your stats update even slower. Uh, so like it takes a lot of time to, to move from the first point. So like I can't read really the numbers are very small, but like it's around eight millisecond, I think. And I think if you are four millisecond tech, that can round up to 12 or 16 millisecond before you start stepping between the utilization signal. And that basically causes a big distortion which we can easily see like over here. So like ideally when you look at the utilization signal, you, you see. Uh, so which graphs over here? Saying I think you're familiar with the tool so it's easy for you to understand. I have no idea what any of these graphs are. Can you explain them more? Yeah, yeah. So this is basically that first one is basically the amount of time spent running on the CPU. So like it's 90 millisecond. It's always running, so that's the big core. So like CPU zero is the little core, and CPU four is the big core. And over here, this is like a frequency residency graph. Okay. So this is the time spent at each frequency. So this is the lowest, and you move slowly to the highest. So like 0.6. That's like for the little eight. CPU? Sorry? That's for the little CPU? Yes, this is okay. for CPU zero, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, for the little one, and this for the big core, like okay. this is like how you move the frequency, like how long you spend in each frequency okay. state before you move. And this is the graph is about utilization residencies. So this is the value you spent at each utilization value. The column on the left is the utilization and the length of the bar is the time you spend on it. Is that what oh, it is? I don't know, let me see, like maybe It's kind of hard, for, hard to tell. Is, can you see, is the pointer visible here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so this, this, this is the utilization values over here. And this is the residency, like how long we spend at each value before okay. we go to the next one. So like, as you can see, like we spend a huge amount of time at the lowest values. This can be easily seen over here. So like usually like our reference point is running at max frequency at the biggest core. And the right hand here is like how that you expect our utilization is AWMA signal, it should ramp up. 
But on the left, you can see clearly the, the distortion effect of the, like all this power management, where especially at the lowest end of the graph, which is supposed to be really, really fast, it actually becomes really, really slow, and like it takes a huge time to pick up to pick off. So if a task was small and suddenly so, wants to be busy. How did you come up with the ideal curve, like ideal based on like it's, how? It's, so this is our reference point. So I think Vincent maybe would like to, but this is our reference point. So like yeah. when I, I think and the. the Folks over here can really tell you the history, but like when Pelt started, like I think it was mostly performance governor and all these power management, maybe not. But uh, from utilization in various point of view, the, the, everything is a reference to running on the big core at the max frequency, and that's our basically reference point generally. Yeah, the <clears throat> the only thing is that the utilization is tracking how much instruction you have executed. So it's normal that on the small Little core at lowest frequency, you are executing less instruction, so it takes time. But it's not about how much time you spend on the CPU. And that's probably one of the problems is that we have a one one map between utilization and frequency. But clearly, when you are at the lowest frequency on the smallest CPU, it will take time to accumulate uh, execution of instruction. Because that's really what we are tracking now. We are not really tracking the time, we are tracking how, min how many instructions you, you are executing yeah, in average. Yeah. Yes, I agree, like, but like, that's the thing, like, that's when like, I'll try to come later. I think yeah. we need to distinguish between tasks that are periodic <coughs> and tasks that are actually do going through a transition because we have no clue. And the problem over here is that utilization signal, which is probably my next slide, like so, imp impact. So the utilization signal actually tells us how much loaded we are. So like even without AS and all this power, it's like you want to do load balance based on load. You don't know how loaded you are once the tasks are going through a transition. Yeah. But in big little system also like you, you are slow if you want to move things because yes, for computational demand, we, we care about how much cycles have done. But from user's perspective, our application, like when they get busy, they expect to move quickly. So like yeah. they don't care. So like they need things to be faster. And the same thing's going for frequencies. So, have you or ever uh, tried to uh, set up that uh, UCRAMP mean? Yeah, higher UCRAMP mean, uh, well, uh, send our, uh, what's it, set our, uh, higher uh, frequency for the some of our specific tasks, which uh, needs our, uh, what's a quick response. Yeah, so the UCRAMP mean is basically about minimum performance requirement you need, so that it's guaranteed when you wake up, you always find that performance. Um, and it helps cut up, I think it helps address some of these issues, but at least from ADPF faults. I think because of this problem, it has been difficult to implement a dynamic loop because you have to be really, really reactive because sometimes you can end up very stuck and for them to realize that you're actually not getting in time because you can like across a longer period when you know you're jumping too much here, yeah, but like if you have small variation where like you, you need a little bit of a like nudge to go faster, like it's very hard to do this with UCLAMP dynamically, UCLAMP men. So you need the ramp um, to be. So I'm trying to see how to approach this. In my, one of my earlier roles in a different company, this is all GPL codes. So I'm not saying anything that's secret here. So one of the issues that was happening there was if you start a bunch of new threads, the time to ramp up to the max frequency will be long because you all, like all of those threads look like tiny threads. They're all contending with the CPU. Um, and I think it's in some sense the same thing. You basically, what the problem you're really seeing is like, hey, CPU is running slow, so the time it takes more for me to figure out my real need of utilization is too long. And you're basically trying to reduce that. I don't think it's right to define it as like, oh, the time is long, because like Wasan was saying, utilization about how much work you did, not how long you took to do it. But you do want to get to your calculating utilization correctly really quickly. So for new workloads, what one thing we did before was saying, if you have a lot of new threads running at the same time and they're taking up most of your CPU, we just jump to Fmax for little CPUs. So what that gave is it, it quickly grew the room in which you can grow your utilization really quickly to show your real need so that we don't have to go through the bottleneck of raising the frequency slowly to figure out what your real need is. And upstream, we have tried to achieve something like that by giving the new threads like a different util that happens to work if it's like a few, a lot of threads running at the same time, but it doesn't account for like one thread that starts up and it's taking up the entire CPU time. So 
my feeling is first thing we should try is if a single new thread is taking up a lot of the CPU time, just go to Fmax. So that you give it, that, give it room to define. So maybe in the next 10 milliseconds, you'll figure out, oh, it only takes 50% of the CPU. And then you can settle down on that quickly. Uh, if you do it only for the new threads, you don't have a huge power impact because it doesn't happen often. I know it doesn't solve all the problem, but I feel like that's the kind of problem you're really trying to solve. So I think I remember that we had this discussion about what should be the utilization of a new task. Uh, uh, and the discussion should it be the max or the mean. And I think we end up for ES to set the mean to not have that much uh, max of PPE uh, jump. <laughs> the gap between what's left, yeah. half of what's yeah. left, right? Yeah, uh, to be honest, like from yeah. looking, because that's one thing I've done, like, but yeah. that's out of probably like of this today is, is too much. But like, I think for the init, it's, 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 it's a different value, but. Uh, yeah, so we set it half of what's left. I don't want to go into a tangent, so like, if, if you have okay. a question. Yes, yes, it's about so, ramp up, so it's not about new task, yeah. So, I mean, I didn't, like, that's one impact like on scheduler, it's like, uh, maybe one last point over here, I think one of the reasons we have these magic numbers is because of this problem. I think in the older system, that numbers we had worked perfectly for this initial system because it, it made, made that distortion happen, but like with, we have a lot of systems today, I think that does not work very well. Another impact I'm looking at is impact and fairness. And to be honest, like that's one area, like I'm probably talking some rubbish over here, so like feel free to correct me, but like, uh, I don't know like if we are complete, like we'll have like, so if you have one task on a little core or like running on a one CPU at lower frequency, move to another CPU. I know that we normalize the runtime, but do we take the whole impact of like differences of like, what's the actual compute demand that task has taken on one CPU compared to the other? And the same thing you can look at at the waiting time, because if a task was on different CPU, like running at lower frequency, it will naturally wait longer. And once it moves between CPUs, that waiting time will really, could be different because you could randomly move to a bigger CPU or at higher frequency and find your waiting time being smaller because now things are randomly faster. And I think this fairness problem can like explain the when I think like something like Geekbench, where you have like lots of stars running everywhere, there is a known fairness problem over there because you're not cycling. And I think we can describe that fairness problem based on these two. Like I think we can detect that there is some task having an incorrect waiting time if we really do do take into account the, I mean, I'm adding, should add say here, like I'm adding a new signal called waiting average, which is runnable but not running. So like how long? And this task should be not invariant, this, this variable. We should, we should take delta exec without looking at the capacity and frequency invariance to, to take the actual real time, like how long the task waits. And that can help us, by the way, implement potentially better load balancing to reduce uh, latencies. But that's a different topic as well. But I think I haven't explored this, and to be honest, I need help with this. But I think there is impact and fairness over here that needs to be explored. And that help, could help potentially help us to implement some kind of load balancing to solve that fairness problem where task always running on all the CPUs and we need to smooth them, but which task should go where and why? It's, so, it's not, it's right not now, we have the assumption that with ES, that's probably less and less the case, there is enough compute capacity for everybody, so there is no fairness problem because as long as there is idle time, and maybe it's, the idle period is maybe too short, but as long as you have idle time, there is enough compute capacity for everybody. But that doesn't take into account how fast you want to run. I agree with that. Well, but you, you can't have any fairness problem if everything has enough compute capacity. You can have some latency problem because you would like a test to is. run faster, but he has the compute capacity that he was looking for. You have like, like N always running tasks. On, yes. on, on the CPUs, you have fairness problem because no, of but the capacity. Yeah, but in this and case, you can have that problem as well. I mean, if, if, but if for frequency. So you, outside the ES, when when we have always running tests, normally we we are taking into account the load, which include the compute capacity. So we will fairly balance the task for that. I mean, because everything is at is at max almost. So. Yeah, potentially, but I think even on SMP, because if you have more tasks than CPUs, then one task could be stuck, and how do you actually move them around? So, like, I with think the, the load balance, average over here with can help balance. us to In do fact, things. Outside ES, you mean? Yeah, yeah, outside o ES. Outside if you ES, have, like, 
there is four a CPUs, SMP, and you have like six tasks running. Yes. So like two, two tasks will always suffer sharing the yeah. CPUs. Yeah, but we don't do that very well. We are now because what's yeah. happened is that we will detect that some tasks are more overloaded than the others. And usually the imbalance load is too high the first time. And we have this, when we fail to migrate, we decrease the threshold, which means that at some point, we will m migrate the task to another one. Oh, right. But that's, uh, I mean, that's probably a 100, 200, 300 millisecond scale. It's not every tick that uh, we have that now. Right. So it's normally we should be, yeah, yeah. We, we are, pre I would say pretty well, pr probably not perfectly. Yeah, but I think when you are not, I mean, these are special cases, I think, yeah. of this generic problem where, like, you are not really busy and you don't have always running tasks, but you have a lot of tasks running and, like, and a different frequency yeah. or, like, performance level, just to be more, gen more generic. I think there's a fairness problem over there, but I, 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 I'm, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't want to really, like, jump to conclusion, but I think that's an area worth more studying over here, like, how this can, imp because, like, we look at real time over here. But yeah. like DVFS distorts our real time or perception yeah. of real time. And when things move around and like you're really dynamic and the different depends on your like how many policies and like how your frequency domain or performance domain look like and yeah. like what's your topology look like, we could end up with like subtle fairness issues as things move around dynamically and like randomly and you'll find like the, 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 the situation could look quite strange. But, but I don't know. Coming I, I'm back not to, trying to, address this to issue your problem, yet. so your problem is that. So just when a task moves from a stable state to a new state and the transition, you need to detect that. The utilist, which is an estimate of the utilization, is where you have to act. I mean, clearly, right now the utilist is just the last max utilization when we go back to sleep. But I mean, if you have a better estimation of the utilization. This is what I'm trying set, to do. Set so it. Yeah, so like I'm trying to extend the utilist. So like I'm trying because our util average is a very good indication if we, when a task is periodic, we know the computation demand yeah. and we know that the task is getting the performance it wants. So I added some logic to say if the util average is higher than the last DQ time, which is our utilist, previous utilist, then this task is going through a transition. So like it needs a new performance. We don't know what it is. At this point, I just accumulate utilist without the invariance, just to say like this task was rise. And the goal from this is, well, help us with the, like, the better, faster transition, but as well make the transition like coherent because I want that behavior to be constant. So like we have a constant model for the system based on the utilization, but it could change based on the system now. But we want a behavior that's actually constant and will, will work the same regardless of what system you have and what characteristics you have of it. So like you actually, once you go through the motion, you want to transition, your transition from point A to B is, is going to be, or the same utilization value A to B should, should take the same amount of time regardless of the system. And that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, I've tried to add ramp up multiplier. I think we've had lots of issues about this built multiplier because one of the issues I actually find is that, well, one of the biggest difficulty for this proposal is that this behavior is really good, but for power and bad for performance. And if you fix it, power will, will go all over the roof because now everything is more reactive. So you'll start paying more power. You, you lose high frequency quite faster. So you need a ramp up multiplier with a zero value so that you can disable this by default. And when at least like when I done some experiment with speedometer, it needs more ramp up, it needs to transition faster. So like one was not enough, giving it two, three or four is better. Maybe there is more debugging to be done and improvements to be done, but like moving to per task ramp up multiplier, I hope will address one of the long term problems we've had with people asking for half, better half life or something like this. And for how to fix the fa fairness problem, I have no clue to be honest. Why do you, you have those two functional approximate uh, runtime on top of util and the other way around, right? Where you mimic the, the idle behavior of a, of a utilization from zero to 1024 on, on a big CPU max capacity. Why haven't you used like util as faster for it, which is following the same idea and doesn't need additional infrastructure? Util is faster. So like the one that Peter suggested exactly, was at yeah. RQ level. It was doing the util at RQ and it was doubling it. 
This is, so this is a variation of the same. So like PILT multiplier that we had was actually changing exactly. the PILT half-life. You, you, this was but done on the run queue, yes, but you could also but apply the this on the But the was doing at the RQ and it was doubling. So this is actually at task level and it's only activated when the task is going from being periodic to being something else. Yeah, yeah, so but like you, can, you, can, you can cut, you, this is complicated because you have to figure out if it's a, if it's a, uh, like a periodic task, then you don't apply it, right? Sometimes There's more logic be behind it. So you could use the same idea for task as well, or not? I don't know. Like, I think the biggest problem I have is that I want a constant response time regardless of the system. And if you double it, so you can actually just take, because like Vincent was telling me, just double it. And I was saying like, OK, we can double it. But this means but the behavior will change but depending on your system. Util as your faster is not system dependent. It's it's just it, will re it will rely on what's value and what you want to <coughs> settle into. So you could, you could in one system, end up migrating very quickly between two, two CPUs because doubling means that it will migrate faster. In another system, it could mean you're not migrating quickly. So you need to have multiple activations. But with the, with the ramp up time, you actually have constant response time. The behavior is the same. You will start accumulating utilization the moment you start going through a transition. And going from yeah, point A to B so that's, that's is, is not dependent on the system. It's dependent on the actual that's calculations, which is. Oh, yes. I don't see the system uh, dependency there, but we can take this. It over. is. The capacities are different for different systems. So if you double it, in one system, this means you migrate quicker. In another system, it means no, no, you have no, to double it three times. Also, in the utility faster, this there is no capacity dependency. My, my point was mainly that once, so if a, once the util average is going above utils, you consider that you, you are not a stable one, so you need to estimate the utils, the utilization. My point was mainly that once you're there, I'm not sure that it's worth using the Pelt algorithm anymore. You can do whatever you want. You can take, a, yeah, <laughs> you can take a, a lookup table. You can take a, a, another algorithm because. It's no more really we load can. tracking. It's, it's one approach, you can. 